everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today, let's just get into it. Let's talk about why lake meat is drying up and what happens if it does actually run out of water. Real quick, if this gives you eco-anxiety, if you think it might, you might not wanna watch it right now. Watch it when you're in a better headspace because it does make me panic a little bit. Second, I have a video about that now. If you want some ways to deal with eco-anxiety, some ways to cope with it, check it out, it's up here. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, so that's just my tips. Also, I wanted to talk about this. I think this is really, really important because this is something that I was not aware of until about three months ago, until I live in the area that gets water from Lake Mead. This reservoir is the largest man-made freshwater reservoir in the United States, and it services three states plus Mexico. It's a pretty big deal. And if you didn't know as well, a lot of our crops in the United States come from California. So we're gonna get into all that, why it's really important, but I know that a lot of people don't know about this issue unless they really live here, me being an example. So I wanted to spread the word on this issue. Lastly, if you'd like to read along, the script for this will be linked down below. So as I mentioned, this wasn't an issue for me until recently, and then it really didn't become even more of an issue for me until I went back to Ohio at the end of August. Um, we were visiting family and I was just seeing like green grass without people having to water it. People just using water willy nilly after I've spent the last two months like being very, very cognizant about when I use water, how much I use, when I water my plants and so forth. And it's just so weird how people in the same country live such different lives, even with it, when it just comes to things like water. So first, what states are affected? Any state that relies on water from the Colorado River. So Nevada, Arizona, and California rely on water from Lake Mead, while Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico all rely on water from Lake Powell, which is also drying up. Ultimately, scientists all agree drying up of Lake Mead and other lakes along the Colorado River is because of climate change. A lot of things play into this. Mostly that Colorado has not seen as much snowfall as it used to like 20, 30 years ago. So because it's not getting as much snowfall, that's how these reservoirs are fed with through snowfall because there's not really any rain in the desert. So the lakes just keep getting smaller and smaller. That plus the more extreme heat waves that we're facing every summer means more and more water gets evaporated. Okay, now let's just touch on Lake Mead, a little bit of the history and where we are now. There are other reservoirs, of course, but none are quite like Lake Mead. It is huge, especially the dam that holds it. The Hoover Dam, if you didn't know. <laughs> so this dam was built in the 1930s after all the residents moved out here for the gold rush and for herding their cattle and everything, and all the springs dried up in the desert. So you can't really live in the desert without water, so they had to find a way to provide water for all the new citizens out here, and that was by damming the river. As I said, Lake Mead is the largest man-made reservoir in the United States. It provides water to 40 million people in the US and Mexico and provides electricity for a lot of Nevada as well because this dam has some fans in there that provide hydroelectricity, but not all those fans. I think only three fans are running now. They might have like 14 or so because there's not enough water to pump through. But Lake Mead is at its lowest point ever in history since the 1930s. Lake Mead is considered to be at capacity at 1,225 feet, but it can hold up to 1,229 feet. So picture a dam, you know, there's like the dam and then there's the spillway where excess water can go over. That hasn't happened in Lake Mead, having to use that spillway in 30 or 40 years. So the last time that the lake was at 95% capacity, almost full, was in 2000. It is now at 39% capacity and it's only at 1,083 feet. Now, if you're in those numbers, it doesn't really quite make sense. It's only 200 feet lower. How is it at 40% capacity? And that is because there was a little bit of a, a technical difficulty, if you will, with the dam's construction. So the dam actually can't pump any more water out once it hits 895 feet. So there's gonna be 895 feet left of water that can't be pumped out. So there's gonna have to be a construction project, I'm sure. Again, we'll touch on that later. And that might not sound like a big drop, you know, from 1,225 feet to 1,083 feet, but that is about 142 feet in the last 21 years, meaning six to seven feet lost per year. So what are these cuts gonna be? So in 2021, this spring, we already started facing level one cuts. Level one is the first stage of like the extreme water loss cuts that no one ever thought they would see. Like people who have been longtime residents of Las Vegas are shocked that we're here. So at level one cuts, Arizona began facing the biggest reduction of about 18% of Arizona's overall water supply. And the people who are affected by this are farmers which makes me very upset, but Arizona's main crops are wheat and alfalfa, which go to feed our cattle, meaning this really doesn't affect people that much. All you gotta do is lessen your beef consumption because the price of beef is probably gonna go up, so just start eating more plants. And then Nevada is gonna see cuts of about 7%, and then Mexico about 5%. But so far under tier one cuts, California is not seeing any changes. This has a lot to do with one major thing for sure, and then one thing that I'm speculating. First is that California actually gets 50% of the water from Lake Mead, so, they have more to spare. 
um, as well as I believe that California produces most of the human crops like lettuce, apples, carrots, avocados, walnuts, almonds, you name it, California probably grew it. We probably should keep giving them water if we want to eat. Again, most states aren't saying that households and businesses aren't going to be seeing very many changes. It's the farmers, which again is really unfortunate, but we as residents still do face some cuts. For example, we can only water our grass, our grass. It's like nine square feet of grass and we're renting so we can't rip it out and our plants, we could only water, I think it's three days a week and then only like at dusk dawn in the middle of the night. If you're caught watering in the middle of the day, you're getting a ticket. If you're caught watering on Sunday, it's literally illegal to use water on Sunday. That sounds so apocalyptic. And I don't mean like you can't shower, you can't cook. This is like outdoor water usage. And then something else that Nevada is doing to mitigate this water loss is they're getting rid of a bunch of ornamental grass like grass in medians grass in like places where there shouldn't be grass but lawns are still allowed and golf courses are still allowed i freaking hate golf courses if you want to hear me rant about golf courses for like 20 minutes videos linked up here but personally i think we're on trend to i'm jumping ahead of myself but we're on trend to see level two cuts at the end of next year i personally feel like lawns are gonna be illegal that sounds really weird too, that grass is going to be illegal. But honestly, it should. It's the desert, it's not a native plant. Now let's talk about how these states are actually going to mitigate these water cuts, as well as what these cuts mean. As I said earlier, Nevada is cutting out a lot of ornamental grass, which is a really good step because why should like the farmers get cuts when we can just put rocks down instead of grass? And doing this alone saved 526,000 acre feet of water down from about 325,000 acre feet of water in just 20 years. So there's a long way to go, of course, with the water usage, but I think that's a really significant step and I think other states should follow suit. And I think Nevada should just tell the golf courses to get rid of their grass too, <laughs> while they're at it. And as we discussed, Arizona's already making cuts to farmers. Again, kind of unfortunate, but I think they'll move into that getting rid of ornamental grass here shortly, if I'm gonna make any predictions. So what does this mean, especially since Arizona is some of the leading producers of cotton, wheat, and alfalfa? This means that the price of cotton will go up. This means that the cost of wheat will go up and alfalfa, meaning the price of your clothes will go up. The price of your beef will grow up, grow up. The price of your beef will go up because those two crops, wheat and alfalfa, go to feed our, our cattle. Maybe other animals, I don't eat animals, so I don't care that much. And this is just further proof that the more plants you eat, the less meat you eat, the less water consumption you use in your lifetime because you're not contributing to the water usage for like alfalfa, wheat, and soy. Now, if you live in the Colorado River Basin, this could also mean heftier water prices, stricter times and stricter days when we're allowed to water and so forth. Um, this is just for now. The restrictions will probably get tighter in the future, but this is just what we're seeing right now. Speaking of the future, let's talk about the future of Lake Mead. This is where this is where you might want to turn around if you if you don't think you can handle this mentally right now. But that being said, the future might look bleak. It is scary, but we have the power to change it. It's not hopeless. So here are the facts. With the current rate of water loss, tier two restrictions could be here as soon as November 2022. That's, that's just over a year. That's scary. This means that Arizona would lose another 80,000 acre feet and Nevada an additional 4,000. And then by July, 2023, the furthest forecast in the report, probably for tier three, the lake could drop to 8,038 feet. At which point California would take its first cut of 200,000 acre feet. I wish I had an equivalent to acre feet. I have no idea what it means. I couldn't find an equation for like the conversion on the internet. So if you can help me out with that, please leave your comments down below. It sounds like a lot of water. It probably is. I like the percentages better, but this is what the internet gave me. 1,038 feet is like emergency level. We're at 1,083. That's like 50 feet to go. But what if it keeps dropping? What if we get to that emergency level and states don't do enough and and we still don't get enough rain and snow. What happens? At 950 feet, the dam's turbines could no longer run, meaning no hydroelectricity would be produced. I also couldn't find an exact amount of how much hydroelectricity like Nevada relies on. I'm pretty sure it's the only state that relies on it right now because there's not very many turbines running, but I really, I don't think it's that much because there's only four turbines, but still that could mean a higher cost for electricity too if those get shut off. At 895 feet, like I mentioned earlier, means no more water can run from the dam. This is also known as a dead pool. This means that nobody would get any more water from the reservoir except for residents of Nevada. So if we reach 895 feet, California's not getting any water, Arizona's not getting any water. I don't know what they're gonna do. They're gonna have to source their water from elsewhere, but residents of Nevada can get water somehow. There's probably like a, a secret pipe or something. <laughs> I don't know. 
I really don't know how they're gonna get the water out other than a big construction project to add another pipe to get the rest of the water. So that is just 188 feet from now at the 895 feet mark. Granted, it did take 21 years to drop 142 feet, but we're seeing a higher increase water loss every year. This, this fact, I don't know, I have no words for when I read this fact. And that is every year, due to increased temperatures every single year, the lake loses six feet of water alone due to evaporation. If water were to reach this low, I would suspect that any water that is not essential to life would be cut off. That means no more fountains, no more sprinklers, unless it's for a farm, no more golf courses, no more grass, period. We're gonna be cut off so bad, water's gonna be costing so much, why would you even want to water grass anyway? I also suspect many people to just up and leave Las Vegas, um, just because either water's gonna be gone or it's gonna cost too much to live here anyway because water's gonna cost so much. People will probably start living in other areas of the, of the country that have more water. Again, this is all speculation. And the last thing I wanna point out before we get to some potential solutions is that this is everyone's problem. It's not just people who live in Las Vegas' problem. It's not just people who live in the whole Southwest problem. As I said, if we run out of water out here, price of beef is gonna go up, price of cotton's gonna go up. People are gonna start fleeing the area, meaning inflation in other cities is gonna go up. It's gonna snowball if, if this happens. And of course, California is a huge producer of food in the US, so you can expect all of your produce price to go up as well. This also means that other states might have to pick up the slack, meaning all of, that, all of the crops grown in the Midwest, corn, soybeans, and wheat, which go to feed our cattle, is probably gonna have to be converted into like potatoes and fruit and other food that humans need to live. Spoiler alert, we don't need meat to live. I'm also willing to bet that at that point, we're gonna start importing a lot of water, which I say this so many times in this video, it sounds crazy, but it might happen. Meaning that like water that comes from the tap might only be for like bathing only and we might, and we might have to rely on bottled water for drinking. I don't know. This is all speculation, all the doom and gloom out of the way. Let's talk about some hopeful things. What can we do about this? Before anyone clicks out of this video and gets upset, there are gonna be some individual actions and some corporate actions, but we can't have corporate actions without the individuals. It is a relationship. It's not one or the other, we need both. First, if you're an individual, you're living here in the Southwest, cut your water usage. It's that simple. Literally every drop, every liter, every gallon matters. So if you can shorten your shower, do it. My personal favorite thing that I love to do since living here is catching my gray water to water my plants. If I was allowed, I would rip out all of my landscaping, but we're renting, so we're not allowed. So I catch my dishwasher, use that dishwasher to water my, my bushes so I don't have to use clean water. If you want, ooh, this is really cool. We just got this in the mail um, about water conservation. We get these in the mail a lot living out here, but something really cool that Las Vegas just started is, so you can get rid of your grass and replace your your landscaping with desert landscaping, which is rocks. Um, and you can get a t-shirt, but where did it say it? So when you replace your grass with part of the Water Smart Landscapes rebate program, get cash back. You'll literally get a cash incentive to replace your grass with rocks. So I think that's one of the best things we can do because watering it one day is not a lot of water, but if you have that grass landscaping, in your in the ground for years that's using so much pointless water for green grass in the desert that doesn't make sense so take up who is this water smart here's the address if you want if you live in the area and you want to replace oh my gosh it's on autofocus so here's the address if you live in the area and you want to um get a cash incentive for replacing your yard you can also support local farmers since they're going to be taking some of the cuts first so help them keep their income you can avoid car washes unless absolutely necessary water parks and something else, uh, I think it's just the city of Las Vegas has on their website, is if you see any like water, fraud, waste, and abuse, report it. And what I mean is like, I saw a sprinkler once in a median trying to water some plants that was like shooting out into the road. Like report that, that's water wasted. Don't report your neighbors for like watering their grass, even though you want to. <laughs> and then the best thing we can do as individuals is to write and call our representatives and companies. For example, we can write to the golf courses here and tell them, hey, replace your AstroTurf. It'll pay itself off in one year compared to how much water you're gonna be using. We can write to our governments telling them, hey, it's really unfair that farmers are taking cuts, but golf courses aren't, and so forth. So this goes for not residents, not only residents of the Southwest, but residents outside this region as well, to write and call, not just about golf courses and other water issues out here, but also write and call your representatives about climate change, period. As I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of these issues we're seeing is because of climate change. We're not getting enough snow and it's getting too hot in the summers. So we need to push our politicians all across the world, fight for climate change so that 
hopefully one day we'll get snow again. And of course, no matter where you live, reduce your water consumption. Water is a finite resource no matter where you live. It might not seem like it if you live somewhere where it's not in short supply. Like when I was in Okinawa, I still conserved water, but I felt like there was it was endless out there. Here, like I can tell water is finite. So just always do your part to conserve water. And then something we can all do is to stop line three and other pipelines because these pipelines are going through clean water resources like the, the Great Lakes region, through the Mississippi and so forth. And people rely on this water to live and we can't rely on this water if it's leached with oil. So let's work together to stop these pipelines. I'll leave a petition and some resources for line three down below. That's my spiel. I will get off my soapbox now, but also don't forget to go watch my video about the golf courses. And if you need any ways to cope with your climate anxiety, I'm sorry I did that. Again, the video is above and below. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I know this was a long one, but this is something really, really important to me and everyone who lives in this region. And I know that I'm not the only one who wishes that everyone knew about this issue. I know it might seem scary, especially for those of us who live out here, but there's still hope. There's a lot we can do to change as individuals and as a society as well. We just need to all work together to get there. But that is all that I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your time. If you made it all the way here and you haven't yet, don't forget to hit the like button. It would really help this video because I know this video is not like the sexiest topic. It's not something that people are necessarily searching besides me. Um, <laughs> so if you could help the, um, the algorithm a little bit, I would really appreciate it. If you have any more ways to conserve water as individuals, or things we can do to stop the lake from drying up, be sure to leave them down below. And if you're new here and you still haven't hit subscribe, don't forget to hit subscribe. I talk about all sorts of things, zero waste. I focus on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste, even though this is really none of those. But I also focus on practical activism, and that's kind of what this breaches into is. So yeah, the next video I have planned is a little more upbeat. It is reacting to some letters I got during my Plastic Free July Letters for Change writing challenge. So if you're also interested in some writing tips that you can also use to call your politicians, I'll leave that video linked above and below. Again, thank you for your time. It means a lot to me. And until next time, remember that our small actions really do have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. The United States' largest freshwater reservoir. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, okay? 10,038 feet is like emergency level. And we're at 10,000, no 10,000, 1,038 feet.